Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today we are journeying to the state of Kansas, to the 23rd Judicial Circuit, the courtroom of Judge Thomas Drees, where THS has brought a case against Mr. Jackson for custody. Actually, DCF. It's called something different in every state. Everybody's got an acronym. He was married to mom. Mom had a child. Obviously, when that happens in most states, the husband is put on the birth certificate automatically as the father of the child or is just automatically considered the father. Well, when mom was with someone other than dad, dad has to fight to prove he is not the father of the child, which is, you know, kind of odd. But that's what's happening in this case, apparently. Dad is trying to say that he is not the father of this child. And mom's new boyfriend is there saying, well, I'm here, but mom is refusing to participate. So it gets a little sticky. I mean, I don't know how we'll ever figure out who the father is. What do you think? We have four hearings ahead of us to try and figure it out. And don't worry, mom does show up at the end and her excuses are kind of interesting. So let's go to court. Good morning, Miss McCoy. Good morning. Thank you for waiting for me, everyone. Do we have everyone we need? I believe so. Looks like we do, Your Honor. Okay. This is in the District Court of Ellis County, Kansas, case number 22DM190, State of Kansas versus Carell Jackson and Carell Jackson versus. Hunter House. May I have an announcement of appearances, please? Jennifer Harper for DCF. Your Honor, Cortell Jackson is appearing in person via Zoom and buying through counsel, Colton Eikenberg and Nates. May it please the court, Your Honor, Mackenzie McCoy is guardian ad litem. Okay. We had had a petition to determine parentage and support. We have had a counter petition to determine a different individual being the parent. I noticed that there has been service of summons on Mr. House. It served on the 18th of January. So far, I do not see a response. We're on today regarding the status on the motion for a Ross hearing and a request for DNA to determine whether or not Mr. Jackson is the father of the child. Where are we at, Ms. Harper? Yeah, I am also aware that there has been service, but no answer. And as court's aware, before we could proceed with trying to do DNA testing, we would have to have a Ross hearing. I have not heard an update from either party about that, and I have not had contact with the mother. Okay. Mr. Eikenberry. Your Honor, I guess what I was thinking we would want to do before scheduling that is to get a report from the guardian ad litem to see if she has had any contact with uh, Mr. House and been able to move along in her investigation on this matter. So um, I guess I would, I would ask if she has been able to speak with any of the parties prior to today. Ms. McCoy. Thank you, Your Honor. I have spoken with Mr. House and um, through Mr. Eikenberry, I've gotten some information from Mr. Jackson as well. I've reached out to the mother um, trying to schedule a time for her to come in so I can speak with her and also speak with the minor child just a little bit. I know she's young, but I just kind of wanted to to meet with her quite a bit um and she hasn't responded to me but i have met with mr house um and i do think if the court is wanting a written report i can provide that i was kind of waiting to do that until i had met with the mother and the child um and when i spoke with mr house he indicated he could pass along that i was trying to get in contact with her because he does have contact with the mother quite a bit um, but that has not occurred. So if you're wanting a written report, um, I can do that. I was just kind of waiting until I had contact with the mother until I provided one. 
Okay. In speaking with mom and Mr. House, is Mr. House acknowledging parenting? He okay. is, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, I can reach out to the mother and demand she get in contact with Ms. McCoy. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead then. I think we should set up the Ross hearing. Um, make sure we have service on Ms. Jackson uh, and Mr. House. And I assume Cortell Jackson will appear also, but let's get all of them at that Ross hearing. Um, I would anticipate, given the, sta the stance of the people involved, that that would be a fairly short hearing. I would think a half hour would be sufficient, maybe an hour just to be safe since there's three attorneys. Fine, Your Honor. Would we be able to have Mr. Jackson appear by Zoom for that as well, since he is in San Antonio? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Does anybody want the hearing in person rather than on Zoom? I'm fine over Zoom. I don't think this is complicated enough to require it in person. So I think Zoom's appropriate. <laughs> okay. Jess, can you find us an hour? So we can give notices for a Ross hearing. So we want to go about uh, a month out. Judge, I'm not sure if you recall, but the only way we managed to get the mother to appear for the last hearing was through the use of a subpoena. Would you like us to go ahead and subpoena her again? Yes, that's. I want to get. I would. I would subpoena both Sherry Jackson and uh, Mr. Hunter House. I think that's the only way we'll get them to step up and and participate. All right, and we'll do that, Your Honor. Okay. And Your Honor, would Jess you like to having a... computer problems? Let me call her. Oh. Hey, we need to find a hearing uh, an hour about. 30 days from now, because we have some subpoenas that need to get issued. Thank you. Your Honor, would you like a written report of what I've done so far, or? A, a, letter, a letter is sufficient. Okay. Letting me know uh, that you've spoken to the individuals and what their stance is. Sure. Jess, we're looking for about an hour. I would go about 30 days from now to give time for subpoenas to be issued and served. Okay, Judge, the week of um, March 18th, you have time on the 20th or the 21st, or you have time the following week. I have time after two on the 21st. For me, Your Honor, the 20th is completely open. The whole morning of the 21st is open, and I have a scheduled prelim at 1 okay. on the 21st. I'm um, not sure if it'll go. But... Well, the next week, Judge has time on the 26th. All I have on the 26th is 10 o'clock status hearings with Judge Flax, but that'll be over by 10.30 and the rest of the day is open. I'm available um, the entire day as well, except for a muni court um, at 3.30, and that wouldn't take very long. So I'm available that afternoon. Oh, so okay. maybe start at like 1.30-ish. I think everyone... It's available then? Yep. I am. March 26th at one thirty, Judge. March 26th, one thirty to 2.30. Does that work for everyone, Ms. Harper? Yes, sir. Mr. Eikenberry. It works for me. I might ask my client if there's any reason he wouldn't be available. 
Mr. Jackson. Oh, that works uh, perfectly. Thank you. And Ms. McCoy. That works, Your Honor. Okay. And who's going to subpoena uh, Ms. Sherry Jackson and Mr. Hunter House? We can issue those subpoenas. We already have the prior one for the mother prepared, so we can just change the date on that. Great. And then, Ms. McCoy, if you could just send a letter to the court and CC it to counsel. Sure. Okay. Right. Okay, we'll get together and do the Ross hearing on March 26th, 2024, 1.30. And Mr. Eikenberry, will you do a short journal entry from today? I can do that, Your Honor. Okay. Anything further, Ms. Harper? No, Your Honor. Mr. Eikenberry? No, Judge, thank you. Ms. McCoy? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you all, and we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Hello, Judge, how are you? Good. Are we expecting anyone else? I thought we were expecting mom and Mr. House, but I don't see them on. Judge, there is a party um, down in the clerk's office. I believe they're, yes, they should, yeah. Okay. So there, there are some subpoenas issued. Yes, Your Honor. And we managed to get Mr. House served, but when we tried to serve the mother, it was returned as not served. They claim she was not at that address any longer. Hello. Hello. Anyone else we're expecting? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Probably not, Your Honor. Okay. This is in the District Court of Ellis County, Kansas, case number 22DM190, DCF <clears throat> versus Cortell Jackson. May I have an announcement of appearances, please? Yes, sir. For DCF. Your Honor, Colton Eikenberry is appearing on behalf of Cortell Jackson, and he is also present this here. Your Honor, may it please the court, Mackenzie McCoy is guardian ad litem. Hey, and you're Hunter mm -hmm. House? Okay. And you're aware of these proceedings? Uh, yes. Okay. We were set to have a hearing on the Ross motion to have DNA testing performed. I am in receipt of the letter from the guardian ad litem. I have reviewed that letter. Does anyone have any objection to the letter? Mr. Eikenberg. No, sir. Ms. Harper. No, Your Honor. Okay. How would the parties like to proceed here today? Your Honor, I think we've really covered a lot of facts in our prior hearings. And given that no one is objecting to Ms. McCoy's letter, uh, I find it to line up with the information we've heard in our hearings prior and what we learned, I think, independently. Uh, I think maybe I would, I would put this out there and ask if the court would just hear a proffer from the attorneys as to our positions regarding this. Court would. Okay. Appreciate it, Your Honor. Um, shall I go ahead? Go ahead. Okay. 
Your Honor, I, I find Ms. McCoy's letter to be, as I said already, very um, accurate as to the situation in that my client, uh, Mr. Jackson, really has not had any sort of relationship with this child. Uh, he is married to the mother, but they have been separated uh, prior to her conceiving the child. And through the investigation and through the statements made prior by the mother when she attended a hearing, uh, all parties believe that Hunter House is likely the father of this child. Uh, he has a relationship with the child, so we are not endangering uh, the relationship that she would have with her presumed father by checking into whether or not Mr. House is her natural father and going from there. Um, so that is the position that we would have, Your Honor, is that the court make the findings that it is in the child's best interest to determine her father is and order DNA testing to determine that. <clears throat> Ms. Harper. Your Honor, I believe Mr. Eikenberry stated everything out really correctly. We've previously had the mother before the court and she testified under oath that while married to Mr. Jackson, she does believe that the father of the child is Hunter House. Through her testimony, she stated Mr. Jackson doesn't have a relationship with the child, but that Mr. House does. So I believe between the mother's testimony as well as the investigation done by Ms. McCoy, it would be appropriate to move forward with genetic testing at this time. And Ms. McCoy, would you like to add to your letter? No, Your Honor. I believe my letter um, states my position. Um, I agree with everybody else today. Um, again, I just reiterate what's in my letter already is that I don't believe it would be harmful um, to her best interest to do genetic testing at this time. The court finds the purpose of the statute with a presumption of parentage being within the marriage and the need for the Ross hearing to determine if it's in the best interest of the child is primarily to protect relationships that have been created and are in existence between husband, wife, and fathers and children. Um, the court adopts the findings of the guardian and litem letter in this situation, the presumed father has had very little contact with the child. Um, although he was married to the mother at the time of conception, and Mr. House is openly acknowledging that he is the father of the child and has a relationship with the child. So the court does find it's in the best interest of this child to have DNA testing done to determine whether factually Mr. House is in fact the father of the child, given the history of the parties and the relationships between the parties and the child. So as far as getting that done, Ms. Harper, what is the preferred method for DCF to have them come in for testing? So once we get the signed court order, another department will reach out to all the parties and tell them where their closest testing facility is. I had assumed there is one in Texas, although I'm not sure exactly where it would be. But parties would get tested, results would get in, and then we would send out the notice of the results. Do they have to go to the same testing center? No. Right. Because I believe Mr. Howe still resides here. Yeah. And the uh, mother, Ms. Wallace Edmonds, resides here. Although she hasn't been real good at coming to these hearings. Can I say something? You may. 
Um, she actually moved to Texas last month. Oh, she did. Yes. You know where in Texas? I assume Dallas. Are you maintaining a relationship with her at this time? Um, yes, she actually left the child here with me and I've had her for the past month. What are the plans moving forward, Mr. Hines? Um, well, she was just planning on moving and I asked her to leave the child here with me and uh, at least until she could figure out a job in a stable environment in Texas. So I still do talk to her. Okay. Ms. Harper, you're the most likely choice to be the coordinator of the DNA testing. Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to ask you to do that and take on that role. Uh, and Mr. House, can you, not now, but after we're done with our hearing, stay on, Ms. Harper will stay on, and you'll need to give her your contact information uh, for Ms. Um, Edmonds so that we can get a hold of her, okay? Okay, I probably couldn't do it at this very moment because my phone is locked up downstairs in the court. Okay, well then you can arrange to give Ms. Harper a phone call afterwards. Okay. To get that information to her, okay? And so if Ms. Ms. Harper, one, put together an order from today's hearing, two, if you'll coordinate the DNA testing, um, and then we'll go from there. How long do you anticipate needing for the testing and the results? Part of it is how long it takes all the parties to go to their specific testing locations. Normally, we'd be able to get everything back within two months. But if a party has issues showing up, it may take longer. Okay. So I suggest setting this out maybe two months and see where we are. Uh, Jess, why don't we go out 10 weeks? Mid-June, Judge? The, the week of June 10th? You have the morning of the 11th open? It'll be available June 11th in the morning. I'm free as well. June 11th at what time, Jess? Nine. Six eleven at nine o'clock? Yes, Judge. Okay. So if you'll include that hearing time in your order. Yes, Your Honor. Sarper. Oh. We'll get back together on June 11th at 9 o'clock. That's still via Zoom, correct? I would anticipate so, particularly if the mother has moved to Texas. It'd be a lot easier to get her hooked up by Zoom. And I believe Mr. Jackson is living out of state as well. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we'll stay on Zoom unless or until one of the parties requests we do the live hearing, and then we'll discuss it. Okay. Right. Any objection to Zoom, Mr. Eikenberry? Not at all, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. McCoy? No, Your Honor. And Ms. Harper? No, Your Honor. Okay. We'll stay on Zoom for now. And we'll get together on June 11th at 9 o'clock. The court does order all the parties to participate in taking the DNA test. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything further, Mr. Eikenberry? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything further, Ms. Harper? No, sir. Anything further, Ms. McCoy? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you all. And we're adjourned. Good morning. Morning. Are we expecting Miss Edmonds? 
Um, I gave her the code for the Zoom call. I didn't. I thought she was going to join. All right, we'll give her a minute. We're going to go ahead and start. Mr. Hunter, you can send her a text and remind her that this hearing is this morning, if you'd like. Okay, I will. This is in the District Court of Ellis County, Kansas, case number 22DM190. This is DCF versus Cortell Jackson. May I have an announcement of appearances, please? Her appearance on behalf of DCF. Your Honor, Cortell Jackson is appearing in person via Zoom and by and through counsel, Colton Eikenberry Hayes. May it please the court, Your Honor, Mackenzie McCoy is guardian ad litem. And Hunter House. Hunter House, you're appearing pro se? Yep. Okay. And Miss Edmonds has not joined us this morning. Back on March 26, the court had ordered the DNA testing be performed. Do we have testing done and do we have results? Miss Harper. Your Honor, we've attempted to reach out to the mother to get her in for DNA testing. She hasn't responded to any calls. All of our mail is coming back returned. So at this point, I've been informed that we are essentially going to back out of the case and no longer seek any kind of child support. Well, we still have the motions pending from the parties to determine parentage. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. House, would you try to reach Ms. Edmonds and see if she's going to join us? Um, yeah, if I call her, will it hang up this call? That's okay. You can get back on. Okay, I'll call her real quick. You can jump off, call her, ask her to join us because it's significant that she participate. Yeah. Then get back on. Okay. I'll be back. Thank you. Yep. She did not answer my call. Okay. Ms. McCoy. Your Honor, um, any attempts we've made to reach out to her as well have um, gone unanswered, um, even back when we were trying, you know, preparing for the Ross hearing. So um, we don't have any updated contact information for her either. Um, and as far as child support, that's, you know, DCF's prerogative, but we do still have those pending motions um, that paternity is required to, to kind of resolve those. So um, I would just leave it up to the court's discretion on how they want to proceed at this time. Mr. Eikenberry. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm essentially in the same position. I would absolutely hate to see this case just disappear with this issue undetermined at this point, We've come this far. Um, I am not familiar with the science and whether it's even possible to have the two gentlemen that are participating today be tested. I, I don't know the status of the child, whether she has had a swab taken uh, yet. So uh, it seems to me there would be a way we could probably still determine who the father of this child is between the parties that are here. Mr. House. Um, I currently have Sarai with me, so if I needed to, I could take her in to get tested with me. Okay. Ms. Harper, at this time, I'm going to ask that you contact the lab, uh, inquire that we have uh, participation from both potential fathers, and we do have the child living with one of the fathers. Can we do the DNA testing with just the fathers and the child. 
We will continue the court order that mom is to get DNA tested. We can certainly cite her in contempt um, and see if we can get her to participate in this endeavor. But if you could check with the lab and see if that's possible. Have thought about how to proceed with paternity. As first, you may hear, your first half of your statement did not come through. I have a thought about how to proceed with paternity. Okay. It's my understanding that Mr. House he wants to acknowledge paternity. Yes. And Mr. Jackson does not wish to acknowledge paternity. And as you're aware, if any party refuses to cooperate, the court can just resolve paternity without DNA testing. As you're aware, Miss Jackson or Miss Edmonds has basically never complied with this court. She's only appeared once. She's never reached out to anybody. I would just ask that if the court wishes to make a paternity finding, we just resolve that now. I would be willing to just take it. Well, for Mr. Jackson's purposes, he has denied that he's the father from the beginning of this case, and, it, and it's truly a physical impossibility for him to be, even though he was and still is married to mother. Well, we've got the issue that he is still married to Miss uh, Wallace Edmonds, and he is the presumed father under the statute, and they were married the entire time. Uh, Mr. House is wanting to uh, claim paternity, but it's also important for other reasons for the child to know who the biological father is. Judge, the issue is that at this time, DCF is essentially we're dismissing our portion. For supervisors, we are not going to do anything with genetic testing at this time. Well, we've already got the order in place to do the testing. All we need to know is, is it possible for the two fathers and the child to go in and get tested? That's not something we'll do. Your Honor, I'm going to object to that. The DCF brought this case and my client has spent thousands of dollars trying to clear everything up court's order is for this to happen, and I'm going to ask the court to enforce that. Ms. McCoy? Your Honor, I don't have any stance on um, Mr. Eikenberry's objection regarding his client's position. Um, I do feel like, as the court stated, it's beneficial for the child to know um, who father is. Um, you know, she's clearly had a relationship with Ms. Mr. House her entire life, essentially. Um, so I, I don't think paternity necessarily changes that. I do think it, it would be beneficial for her later on in life to have that information. Um, but again, I, I don't have a, an opinion um, one way or the other on how the court wants to proceed. I, I think um, in regards to the best interests of Sarai, it, it's just a matter of making sure if Mr. House is going to... Um, you know, take on paternity that he he do that and he step up and continue to acknowledge that responsibility throughout the rest of her life. Okay. Mr. Eikenberry, I'm going to ask that you file a motion to hold Ms. Edmonds in contempt for failing to follow through with the order. Ms. Harper, at this time, I, I am not going to let DCF out um let's get see if we can get the testing done with just the two fathers and the child um 
if that's possible, let's get the testing done. Uh, we'll try to get Miss uh, Edmonds in here under a contempt citation. And if she continues <laughs> to refuse to cooperate down the road, Miss Harper, then I will allow DCF out. But we're too far down the road on this case, and parties have spent considerable time and effort to get to this point. And it is in the child's best interest to find out through the testing who the natural father is. Then down the road, we can determine, you know, I don't know if Mr. Jackson intends to stay married to Miss Edmonds or not. Um, you know, I don't know if Mr. House is wanting to pursue a request to adopt, but we're going to have issues down the road and we need to know who the biological father is. And we're frankly just too far into this case right now to just stop because a year from now, we're going to end up in the same place. She'll come to you, Ms. Harper, for assistance, and we will start this process all over again. So let's follow yeah. Let's follow through and see if we can get the testing done. Yes, Mr. House. Uh, Sophia just texted me. Do you want me to tell her to get in here? If she can get on, she needs to get on. She's about to end up in a contempt citation for not complying with court orders. Okay, let me text her and tell her to get on your right now. Yeah, she started this process. Okay, I'm here, I'm sorry. Okay, and you're in a box that's marked S leg lighter? Yes, that's my phone. Okay, but you are Wallace Edmonds? Yes, sir. Okay. First thing we need to do is put you in a breakout room with Miss Harper so you two can talk and figure out where you're headed. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, Jess, if you could put Miss Edmonds and Miss Harper in a breakout room. Miss Edmonds should be back in shortly. Thank you. Can you hear us, Miss Edmonds? Yes, sir. Okay, Miss Harper. So, Your Honor, I spoke with Miss Edmonds. I got an updated address, phone number, and email address for her. After this hearing, I will send the order to her through an email address. I'll go ahead and give her new address and new phone number for genetic testing to be completed. And I did warn her that non-compliance could lead to a contempt. Okay. Ms. Edmonds, you understand where we're at in this hearing? Um, yes, I believe so. Okay, the court has ordered the DNA testing. Mm -hmm. with, yes, sir. With Mr. Jackson, Mr. House, yourself, and the child. Okay, and that needs to be done so that we can then move forward in this case. Of course. Okay, so mm -hmm. you need to stay in touch. Okay. With DCF. Oh, with DCF? You need to continue appearing at these court hearings. Okay, yes, sir. I'm so sorry. I wasn't notified of this at all. I moved and I didn't realize I was supposed to notify y'all, so that was my fault. But I'm so sorry. If I would have known, I would have done it. I'm so sorry, sir. I have no problem with it. It'll get done as soon as possible. All right. Ms. Harper, do you know when the appointment is for the DNA testing? No, Your Honor. That's something that we'll have to coordinate with the location closest to her. Okay. Okay. And Ms. Edmonds, let me make this clear. If we have another hearing and Ms. Harper tells me she can't contact you, you're not responding to her texts, her phone calls, her mails, I am going to direct a party to file a motion to cite you in contempt. I understand, sir. I, I never received any text messages or else I would have done anything you guys asked. I haven't received anything through my phone or anything. 
I understand the mail is my fault, but I have not received a text message or else I would have responded. So I was not aware of this. Okay. So the, the order from March 26th continues. The DNA testing is to be done. Mr. House, Mr. Jackson, and Ms. Edmonds, you're going to cooperate with DCF to get this done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything further today, Ms. Harper? Marge, if we want to set this for another hearing down the road. Well, we will. Once I know where the parties are at, we'll know what kind of hearing we need to have and how far down the road. Are you st staying in at this time, Ms. Harper, for DCF? For now, yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Eikenberry, anything further? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. McCoy, anything further? No, Your Honor. Mr. House, anything further? Uh, no. Thank you. Okay. Jess, we need to set a review hearing on the DNA testing. And how far down the road does that normally take Ms. Harper, assuming they can get in in the next week to 10 days? Um, how long does testing results take after that? Results themselves can take 30, 45 days, but it's pretty rare that we can get everyone in within two weeks. Okay. Jess, let's go about a month down the road just to make sure everybody has gotten in and been tested. Good morning. Good morning, Judge. Are we expecting anyone else? <laughs> Judge, I don't see my on here. Um, some document I received in the mail today by Zoom, but uh, I haven't spoken with him okay. for some time. But I don't know that he's really necessary to be here today with what has developed, so. Okay. This is in the District Court of Ellis County, Kansas. It is case number 22DM190, DCF versus Hotel Jackson. May I have an announcement of appearances, please? Jennifer Harper appears on behalf of DCF, Your Honor. Your Honor, Cortell Jackson is appearing by and through his retained counsel, Colton Eikenberry of Hayes. And Mr. Uh, Hunter House, you're appearing pro se? Yes, sir. Okay. And Your Honor, I, I believe I appear as guardian ad litem on behalf of Mackenzie McCoy. Yes. Okay. We are on for a review. And we had ordered the DNA testing. We have those results back, but they are not finalized for a period of 20 days. So both parties stipulate to their admission at this time. Governor, I was getting some feedback while you were speaking. That's okay. That connection. I was saying we have the DNA testing back. The notice was given on September 5th, so it would become valid September 25th, unless the parties want to stipulate and then just move forward. Your Honor, I'm comfortable with stipulating. Uh, my client's position all along has been borne out by the facts as they have been determined. So uh, I would stipulate to the uh, results of the genetic testing. And Mr. Hunter House. Yes, sir. 
Again, you're representing yourself here pro se today. It's your desire to be pro se? Yes. Okay. And you've seen the test results? I have. Okay. Are you wanting to stipulate to those or do you want to contest those? Um, stipulate means... If you stipulate, that means you agree to them and you will be named the father of the child. Yeah, I agree to them. Okay. So the court will accept the stipulation of both um, Mr. Eikenberry on behalf of Mr. Jackson and Mr. House, and the court will find that Hunter House is the father of the child. Mr. Eikenberry and Ms. Harper, is there any reason for Mr. Eikenberry to remain? I have no so, Your Honor. I agree, Your Honor. I, I think I, I would ask for my client to be released from this matter. Okay. Uh, and, and I have not fully reviewed all the orders. I don't know if there were previous child support orders that have gone unpaid or not. Ms. Harper? There's not, Your Honor. Okay. Any objection to releasing Mr. Corral Jackson? No, sir. Mr. Cortell Jackson is released. Thank you, Mr. Eikenberry. Thank you, Your Honor. Everybody have a good day. You too. Okay, Ms. Harper. Well, Judge, I think the next piece of business is to determine exactly who the child is primarily residing with at this moment. Okay. And how would you like to do that? Would you like them placed under oath and question them? Or do you Let's want to see put them in a breakout room? Can I speak with both them in a breakout room, please? Yeah. Hey, Jess. And let me just clarify. Uh, we have a box that is says Sophia Edmonds. Are you Wallace Edmonds? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're also pro se in this matter. Yes, sir. And you're, it's your desire to be pro se in this matter. Yes, sir. Okay. And you understand that given the testing and the stipulations that we're at the point now, Hunter House is the father of the child. Sure. Okay. We're going to put Mr. House, Ms. Edmonds, and Ms. Harper in a breakout room. Do you need Mr. Herman as GAL in there? I don't think he's needed, but if you'd like to come, he can. Mr. Herman? Your Honor, I, I was just thinking with, with the establishment of paternity right now, I don't know what exactly my role is go, going forward. If the court wants me to stay involved, I guess I... I'd like to go in the breakout room. If if not, uh, I I could submit an order to withdraw okay. in this matter. I, I I think technically it's best for the GAL to stay in until we establish uh, parenting time and a child support order. Okay, I I, I might as well go with. with Ms. Okay. In, in short order. So, Jess, if you could oh. put Ms. Harper, Mr. Herman, Ms. Edmonds, and Mr. House in a breakout room. I did, Judge. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did we lose Ms. Harper? Apparently so. She was saying, she was saying uh, let's tell Judge, and she cut out in the middle of it. So, okay. Did we see you, Jen? Parties are back. Yeah. Miss Harper, you're uh, you're not coming through at all. Can't hear you at all. Okay, let's see if this works now. 
That's better. Now we there you go. Uh, computer this way. Okay, so we spoke with Miss Edmonds and Mr. House. They have essentially agreed that the child is with Miss Edmonds during the school year and Mr. House during the summers. Now, not sure if the judge recalls, but at an I prior hearing, Miss Edmonds was against child support. I clarified today that she is wanting to proceed with child support against Mr. House. So I think at this point, basically, we just need to get financial information, get a child support worksheet on file. I do want to point out to the court that DCF is involved in a parenting plan and our petition didn't request a parenting plan be issued. So that's not something we're going to really be involved with. Sure. Mr. House and Ms. Edmonds, you understand that you're both working on this pro se, which means you're representing yourself. So it's up to the two of you to come up with a parenting plan. Yes, yes sir. If you run into problems, either one of you can make a uh, file a motion with the court to review the parenting situation. Okay. Yes, sir. Otherwise, work with one another and work out your parenting situation. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Harper. Well, Judge, I would just ask that this be set out. I'm not sure how long it would take for, well, now it looks like we lost Mr. House. Okay. But I'd ask that it be set out in order for the parties Let's to provide us- Wait a moment for Mr. House to come back. I'm sorry, it kicked me out. That's all right. Go ahead, Ms. Harper. So, Judge, I just think this case should be set out a little bit for the parties to provide us with income information and any daycare, health costs, et cetera. Okay. Ms. Edmonds and Mr. House, you're aware that you need to cooperate with Ms. Harper, provide her your financial information, information regarding insurance on uh, Sari and also uh, information regarding daycare and provide yep. all that information to her as requested. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. And then she'll prepare a worksheet, run it through the Bradley software, and Mr. Herman will review all that or Ms. McCoy and make sure we've got an adequate child support worksheet in order. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions, Mr. House? Not at the moment. Do you have any questions, Ms. Edmonds? No, sir. Okay. And both of you, you have given good contact information to Ms. Harper? I believe so, yes. I've never Wait, really been in contact hearing? with her, so I'm uh, not sure she has my information. As we finish this hearing, I will sign off. Once I'm off, we will quit. Uh, broadcasting this and then once we quit broadcasting mr house give miss harper your contact information so that she has it okay 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 how far out do you want to go miss harper well we can send them the dra packets for the information within the next couple of days but i'm not sure how long it will take for them to get it get the information fill it out and return it I'd like to say one month is enough, but I don't know how much time they would need. Yes, no. ma'am, that should be enough. Pardon me? That should be enough time for me. Yeah, when you get your packets, fill it out as complete and accurate as you can and get it back to Ms. Harper as quickly as you can, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Jess, if we could set up a review about a month down the road. Did you have time on the morning of October 15th? Does that work, Ms. Harper? All right, it would work for my calendar. Mr. Herman? Uh, what time did you say, Jess? I didn't yet, um, but Judge could do a 9, um, 9.30, 
11, 11.30. I have a nine o'clock set, but uh, as, assuming it's on Zoom, I, I'd be available the rest of the day. Do we want to do an 11 o'clock? Works for me. Mr. House? That's fine. Ms. Edmonds? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll get back together on Zoom on October 15th at 11 o'clock. Ms. Harper, you'll do the journal entry? Yes, Your Honor. Is the Zoom information going to be the same as today? It will. Okay. So same Zoom information as today. Okay, thank you all. I'm going to jump off and then Mr. House get that information to Ms. Harper, okay? Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Do we have everyone we need? I believe so. Okay. This is in the District Court of Ellis County, Kansas, case number 22DM190, DCF versus Cortell Jackson. I have an announcement of appearances, please. Jennifer Harper, DCF, Your Honor. May it please the court, Your Honor, Mackenzie McCoy is guardian ad litem. And your house. house, the father in this matter. Sophia Edmonds, the mother. Okay. We last got together on September 12th. At that time, the testing determined that Hunter House was the father in this matter. Mr. Jackson was allowed to bow out of the case, as was his attorney. So, and we still need the journal entry from that hearing, Ms. Harper. We still don't have that journal entry. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. We sent it to the parties a little about two weeks ago. We don't have a response yet, so we'll probably just submit it Rule 170. Good. And as I understand, the issues that were to be decided now involved uh, child support. Um, and then the parents needed to establish their visitation time. Um, be added the, in this process. Um, the visitation time we don't really have set just because we're very easygoing about who she's with at the time. So currently she's still with Hunter. Um, and I'm never opposed to him asking to see her. I'll always take her. And sometimes when I need, or if I have to work or anything like that, then he'll take her. So I'm not sure what the visitation would be at that point, because if I did say that he could see her every weekend or have her one month or so, I'm sure he would have her more than that in general, just because he does help out a lot. So I'm not sure what the visitation technically would be. Because currently, as of right now, he does have her quite a bit. Mr. House. Um, I mean, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I have documented all the time that I've had her since she's moved to Texas, and it's quite a bit. Okay. You need to get that information to Ms. Harper so she can determine whether or not you qualify for a shared custody arrangement. Okay. Okay. Have the party... Have the parties cooperated in getting their financial information to Ms. Harper? I have not received anything to give to her. Judge, before I move on, Neither I, have I, I asked her about a week. Doesn't, we're not involved. Did he? Hang, hang he on. Can... They were speaking over you, Ms. Harper, and then you <laughs> broke up. So you, you did not get on the record. Go ahead, Ms. Harper. I'd just like to clarify that DCF is not involved in the custody, so we can't address shared custody. It's just whether or not shared residential would be on the child support worksheet or not. I just want to make that clear for the parents. 
Okay. And regarding their information, we had sent out DRAs after the last court hearing. We didn't get them back, so I'm not sure if something got lost in the mail. We sent them again about a week ago. So they should be receiving them shortly. If they don't, then I may just email them a copy after the court hearing today just to ensure that the mail process is working and they're getting it. Mr. Hunter, have you received your domestic relation affidavit information from I'm these? Not. And I also gave her my email and she told me she would email it to me, but I haven't got it on my email either. Ms. Edmonds. I have not received it either, and I could not track down her information, so I wasn't able to ask her for it. Do you have a good email? I think Ms. Edmonds froze up. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You're, you're breaking up, Miss Edmonds. Um, what I'd like to do is put the parties in I'm a sorry, breakout you... room so that you can exchange email information to make sure that this is getting back and forth. We need to get your child support established, okay? Yes, sir. So, Jess, if you could put yes, the sir. parties in a breakout room. So that everyone can exchange email information. Just Miss Harper and the mother and father, or and include the guardian ad litem in that. Okay. Okay. Did you get your emails exchanged? Yes, Your Honor, and I also verified their best mailing address and the best phone number, okay. and they were the mailing addresses we had on file, so I'm not sure what exactly happened. Okay, well, go ahead and email those to them and they can get them filled out and get back to you as soon as practical. Um, and also the parents are encouraged, Mr. House, Ms. Edmonds, you know, you can put together your parenting plan. There are pro se documents that you can fill out. That gives you a good safety net in case you reach a point where you don't agree on who's going to have the child at what time. That way you are you have a parenting plan on file and that becomes your safety net. Okay? okay? Yes, sir. You can obtain those through the Kansas Judicial Council. Um, the, the attorneys aren't going to help you fill those out, but they can point you in the right direction on where you can obtain those pro se documents. Yes, okay. sir. And that would be in your best interest to have that as a safety net. So that's regarding the parenting time. But we need to get the child support locked down, okay? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Anything further today, Ms. Harper? No, Your Honor. Anything further today, Ms. McCoy? No, Your Honor. Anything further today, Ms. Edmonds? Um, no, Your Honor. Anything further today, Mr. Howells? No, oh, sir. Okay. How far down the road do we want to set the next hearing to establish the child's point? With the holidays coming up, maybe early December. Okay. Jess, can you find us something in that first week of December? Judge, you would have time on December 3rd. You at 10 a.m.? I'd be available. I'll be in Russell at nine. Um, do we have anything after that? 
Yeah. Um, the, the heat judge could do an 11 or 1130. 11 would be fine. Works for me as well. That work for you, Miss Edmonds? Yes, sir. And Mr. House? Yes, sir. Okay. Cooperate with DCF, get your financials in so that they can put together a proposed child support worksheet that you all can review and be ready for the hearing December 3rd at 11. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. And parties, I assume, want to continue to do that by Zoom? Yes, sir. Your Honor. Yes. All right. Ms. Harper, will you do an order from today? Uh, Mackenzie, do you want to just now? I'm Pardon? sorry, what was that? Do you want to review the order before I sign it? Since it's just no, you can waive my signature on that. Thank you. Yeah, just you've exchanged the information, you're sending them, they need to get their financials into you so that we can do the child support hearing on December 3rd. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.